No matter where you live in this great country of ours, a natural disaster could strike at any time. This year we've seen the devastation from forest fires in California, those unbelievably horrible floods in Colorado, and deadly tornadoes in several states. Our next guest barely escaped the largest wildfire in California's history. She's written a book called The Fire Outside My Window, and she's here with some advice for all of us. Sandra Miller's Younger, welcome to daytime. And we are glad that you're here, by the Thank way. Thank you, Jerry. 2003, take us back, the Cedars Fire. Now look, let's make it clear, wildfires are a part of the landscape, essentially, of California and other states. In California the, in and most of the West That's is right. known as wildfire country, but in fact, Every area of the globe has a fire regime except for the ice caps. Right, but this particular wildfire was beyond any other. That, I mean, it's the, still. It's still the, the biggest, the biggest wildfire in on record in California, even, even considering the recent Yosemite fire, the rim fire there, which was enormous. Okay, so there you are at home. The fire starts. Take us back to that day. What was that like for you? We were asleep when the fire started and uh, or when it came close to us and we woke up in the middle of the night and saw literally flames outside our window because the fire was so huge and it was moving so fast that the emergency responders couldn't really get out in front of it so we had to grab a few things I grabbed pictures things off the desk mm. and the dresser dumped them in a laundry basket we grabbed our dogs and we ran for our lives so nobody was able to warn you ahead of time to evacuate they were trying but the fire was moving faster than fire engines can drive so mm. uh, not everyone got notice and because it came in the middle of the night that made it more difficult too you lost some some good friends and some people that you knew some neighbors we lost um, 12 people in our community and the entire area was wiped out in terms of nearly everyone losing their homes. That's true. You know, just to paint the picture here, we have pictures of your home before, mm -hmm. and then we have a picture of it after. Right Go after. Gorgeous we, home right there on the, the countryside. Before, right? Yeah. Yes. Our dream house. Oh, my heavens. That's afterwards. You Nothing. can barely even see a little pile of rubble there. Now, unbelievably, Sandra <laughs> has rebuilt in the very rebuilt. same spot. So yes. you, you have no fear. Well, I wouldn't go that far. We have a much healthier respect and understanding of wildfires now, and we know a little bit more about being prepared, but we are taking a risk to live there. Absolutely. Now, let's relate this to a lot of natural disasters that happen around the country, and you have some advice, some, some pointers that people should really take to heart, and what are they? Well, what I'd like to share with your viewers are the five mistakes that could really cost you your life in a natural disaster. And the first mistake, of course, I made all of these mistakes, mm. which is how I know. Sure. The first mistake is ignoring red flags. Mm. I did not even read the newspaper that morning, or I would have known mm. that the fire danger that day was critical, and I would have been more alert. But as it was, I did wake up in the middle of the night to flames outside my window, and the next thing I know, my house is gone, my neighborhood is right. gone, and 12 of my so, neighbors. So pay attention to pay the, the attention. newspaper, to the radio, to the TV. Right. Yeah. Okay, the next one you say is neglecting critical preparations. That's right. Do you have your precious items together in one place so you don't have to go running crazy all over the house like I did with only about 10 minutes? Get them together. Know where your car keys are. Mm. We didn't even know that. Depend on the authorities. Well, the mistake is that people depend a little too much on the authorities. They think that evacuation notice is coming, and it might not. So you have to be prepared to take care of yourself. Obsessing about stuff, and we all do this. Stuff. So don't. One of my neighbors, Jerry, was found in his car dead mm. with a filing cabinet in the oh back that he'd taken the time to load. Nothing you own is that important. And obviously don't wait too long to evacuate. That's the biggie. We ended up driving out through fire, and you don't want that to happen to no. you. All right, lots of really good information, an incredible, compelling story. Sandra Miller's Young, thank you very much. The book, again, is The Fire Outside My Window. We'll be right back with more daytime right after this.